Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope you're all doing well, healthy. Hopefully got a little bit of time this year to play with your race cars, get to the track. There's a few more races coming up. We have a Texas half mile event in about two weeks. Obviously, we head into November. We got World Cup. For us, that's about the end of the season. Hopefully, you might be able to race year round. Maybe you're down south. Uh, south of the equator who knows but anyway hopefully hopefully you can continue to have fun as well so today i wanted to go back to a discussion that i started a while ago and i felt that i wasn't quite prepped for in hindsight and that's exhaust back pressures effect on volumetric efficiency so there were some things going on with the, the car in question the the theory is sound we're going to get into that. I'm going to show you that I have proof. Um, unfortunately, this doesn't have a back pressure sensor. But as you're going to see from the boost plot, it's pretty obvious what was going on. And I have enough experience in this particular field, especially this in this exact subject on back pressure, that it'll make sense when you see it. So we're going to start by looking at a dyno sheet this car was a two liter evo 8 it's on ethanol uh, it happens to also be on an infinity as they often tend to be so wastegate line in this car is 31.6 pounds so 315 kpa one of those cool points in metric to sae that cross over you can see it did 573 wheel it was about an 11.7 air fuel peak power 7500 so when we go and look at the VE plot, we're about 86% uh, at 8,100 RPM. You can see it highlighted right here, hopefully. We come over here, it says the exact percentage it was using is 85.2, suggested is 83.1, trims negative 2%. Uh, back pressure isn't being used, so those numbers would look really cool if it was, but it wasn't. So that kind of gives us the baseline. Right there, 31 pounds, 313 kPa. We can switch here real quick. 31.3. Um, that the suggested VE was 83, and I was running 85. Now, we're going to go back to the dyno sheet here. We're going to kind of show what happened when I turned the boost up a little bit. Now, as you can see in that, I had the VE blocked out. It was constant. It wasn't tapering towards high boost. Um, I always do it that way. I know that they're going to get richer as the boost goes up just because... I'm going to start running out of turbine housing, typically, before I run out of fuel. Um, this car was actually back on the dyno because of the opposite problem, but we went to 39 pounds, made 708. This car isn't really making good power for a 6466. Um, I'm not sure what housing is on it. We didn't build it. Like I said, it wasn't instrumented, so I don't have all of the details. But now if we, and we can see peak power is still about 7600. And this, to me, is a good indication that back pressure is still under control. Um, when we go to its VE table, we're going to see that at that point, things started to change a little bit. Now, again, not instrumented, but still the same VE table. We get up to basically the same spot. Now, all of a sudden the suggested number is 79 moved quite a bit trims moved boost obviously has gone up but this is still like i said it's flat now i came in here later and i had to up the kpa uh, columns to give myself some resolution and as you we're going to get into this is going to start getting worse and worse and rather than bore you with each individual pull uh, on this software, we're going to go to the dyno software 
and I'm going to just keep adding runs. So I turned the boost up a little bit, got a, just a touch, picked up 27 horse. Now, as you can see, peak power just started to move down. Only 200 RPM here, but that's usually the first sign that we're starting to run out of turbine housing. Peak power starts to drop. You can see the shape of the power power band is starting to change. It's starting to flatten out and definitely favor the left. Now when we go up a little bit more, three more pounds, now it really has moved to the left. Now it's 6,800 RPM. So now we've dropped 600 RPM off of where we were, so 800 total. Yes, we're making more power, that's true. But it's starting to get worse and worse. Now when we have the last run up here, there's a couple things that are interesting. So peak power, it did stay more or less the same. We'll compare just the last two here real quick. Close them, reopen them. Now when you look at the last two, sure, it made a little bit more there. You can see past 7,500, identical. It didn't pick up any power. But now when you look down here at the boost, there's two and a half pounds almost three pounds to not make really any more power. I mean, sure, it made a little, but really? I mean, four horsepower with three pounds? So, pretty obvious candidate for back pressure problems. Torque barely moved, 13 foot-pounds. So, definitely out of turbine housing. And as far as 64-66s go, I don't normally run 50 pounds of boost. Um, this particular customer was completely convinced that's what he needed to do. I believe this is the last one. I know I had one called Final, but I think that was me making changes. Let's see here. That's the boost. Let's go find the boost here real quick. Okay, yeah, so this is the last run. The Final was me trimming that out, but now... You could see we had been down here, right, between the 86 and 83, where it was hovering around 85%, more or less. Let's back up just a touch, just to keep it a little bit closer to where we were. We were 81, 81.30, 75 is what was commanded. It wanted 72.5. So it's lost 13% going from that 315 kPa to where we are now, about 440 kPa, which this thing peaked out at 50.2 pounds, way past what I think a 64 would normally like. But as you can see, definite evidence that as the back pressure goes up, the volumetric efficiency drops. And as you do that, you pull fuel. Yeah, you can make a little bit more power. You know, eventually you're going to start really hurting yourself you're gonna get into some crazy misfires that you will never be able to cure but one side effect of that that's kind of interesting is because you're pulling fuel constantly i still was only 80 percent idc right here um i had pulled that 13 percent out more or less and the injector duty cycle really didn't change much because as the ve got worse i had to pull fuel and I didn't pull fuel where it started making peak power because the peak power moved down. So kind of an interesting side effect. A lot of people will argue about how much fuel they have on a given fuel injector. In this case, these were ID2000s or Fuel Injector Clinic 2150s, 2450 Walboros. They obviously could supply the 792 wheel, but it was only making 792 at 6800, not 8800. So... Does it supply 800 horse? Sure. Uh, but where is it doing it at? So when you're building a fuel system, very important thing to keep in mind. Especially if you run in a limited turbo class, you might not need as much as you think. You might not need that big mechanical. You might be able to get away with it just because you're going to run out of turbo anyway. So that kind of concludes this EMAP uh, lesson, I guess. Uh, looking back at. Uh, hopefully you had some good takeaways from this. You can see what happens. You can see why this is a bad thing when you're 
failing to get the, the good air in the cylinder because you can't get the bad air out. Um, volumetric efficiency obviously tanks. That back pressure leads to higher EGTs. It leads to propensity for knock. This car didn't have a knock sensor, so kind of scary. So I just was real nice to it. But the takeaway here is that put a back pressure sensor on your race car, especially if you have a standalone. And size your turbine housing according to what you're actually going to use it for. Don't push it past because sometimes less is more. In this case, I don't think there's any reason to run 50 pounds because I think it's just that much more likely to break. But anyway, customer's always right, except when they're not. Take care, guys. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. If you know somebody that might be interested in this content, please consider sharing it with them. And if you want notified of new content as it's added, click the bell icon and YouTube will take care of that automatically. Uh, as always, I appreciate everything you guys do for our channel and the good ideas you have. I'm going to do one for timing on ethanol and why it's not the same as race gas. Some of the things that we've run into over the years, maybe it's all common sense to everybody, but I was asked to go over it by one of our viewers. Uh, Firefighter Tim, he wants to have me cover it, and I have some dyno sheets for him and some interesting info. So that'll be coming up. Got a tuning trip to Vegas to do some cars there this weekend. So you probably won't see that one until next week. But anyway, something to look forward to. And then I'm going to have a, another quick bonus video on what happens when you have condensation inside your intercooler. Okay, guys, take care.